The Battle of Bouvines was fought on the 27th of July, 1214, near the town of Bouvines in the county of Flanders during the Anglo-French War of 1213 to 1214. A French army commanded by King Philip Augustus of France squared off against an allied coalition army, including German, Flemish, English, and Brabantian troops commanded by Holy Roman Emperor Otto IV. It was a defining moment in the history of Europe. On November 1st, 1179, Philip II of House Capet was crowned King of France at the age of just 14 years old. Born into a long line of kings of the Capetian dynasty, the kingdom which he inherited from his father was far from unified. At this time, the French monarchy lacked central authority and overall had very limited powers. The vassals of the French king had a large degree of autonomy and were not interested in bowing to a king at the cost of their own power and sovereignty. Only a very small fraction of the lands in the French kingdom were under the direct control of the king, most notably the area around Paris called the Ile de France. The rest of the kingdom of France was under the control of various vassals, dukes, counts, and nobles which the king had to work with to rule his kingdom. Dealing with these French princes often felt like dealing with foreign powers, rather than dealing with subordinates. In some cases, the power and influence of some of these French vassals would grow to rival the kings. This led to further challenges to the king's authority, and in some cases, open rebellion. Such was the case with the Duke of Normandy, William I, a vassal of the French king, who, a century earlier, in 1066, conquered England and took the title King of England. This event would inextricably link the politics of England and France for centuries. In 1152, the soon-to-be King of England, Henry II, Duke of Normandy, married Eleanor of Aquitaine. This union was important because when Henry ascended to the throne in 1154, this put him in control of a massive realm stretching from northern England to Normandy, Anjou, and the Duchy of Aquitaine, giving rise to what historians would later refer to as the Angevin Empire. When Philip II became King of France in 1179, he began building up his army and navy, and within a year of his coronation, went to war against his rivals, starting with the County of Flanders, and later with Henry II of England. His main objective was to destroy the Angevin Empire and bring those lands back under the influence of the French crown. In 1189, Henry II died and his son, Richard I, also known as Richard the Lionheart, became the new English king. Under Richard, the conflict with France continued briefly, but was put on pause for the Third Crusade, which Philip and Richard both participated. When the crusade was over, the conflict once again resumed. Richard seemed to be gaining the upper hand, but died suddenly, tragically, shot by a crossbow during a siege. The English throne then passed to Richard's brother, John Lackland, or John I, in 1200. And although a peace treaty was signed, hostilities soon continued. John's mismanagement of Aquitaine led the province to erupt in rebellion a disturbance that Philip secretly encouraged. Philip took the offensive and by the end of 1204, most of Normandy and the Angevin lands, including much of Aquitaine, had fallen into Philip's hands. For successfully extending the borders of France, these conquests earned Philip the nickname Philip Augustus. Pushed by his barons, John launched an invasion of northern France in 1206, attempting to retake these lands. He landed with his army at La Rochelle, but the campaign was a disaster, and John eventually bargained for a two-year truce. Unwilling to give up, King John began looking for allies in his struggle against France. To the east, in the Holy Roman Empire, a dispute formed over who should become emperor, Philip of Swabia of House Hohenstaufen, supported by France or Otto IV of House Welf, 
supported by England. In 1208, Philip of Swabia was assassinated. As a result, the imperial crown was given to his rival, Otto IV, the nephew of King John of England. Otto, prior to his accession, had promised to help John recover his lost possessions in France, but circumstances prevented him from fulfilling this promise so far. In 1214, Philip attacked the county of Flanders, sending a fleet to the port of Dam and an army to lay siege to the town of Ghent. However, the campaign achieved little, as hardly after the siege had even begun, Philip's naval fleet was trapped in the harbor by the English and destroyed. The destruction of this French fleet once again raised John's hopes, and so he again began preparing for an invasion of France to reconquer his lost lands. In early 1214, a coalition was assembled against King Philip Augustus of France, consisting of Otto IV, Holy Roman Emperor, King John of England, Count Ferrand of Flanders, Count Renaud of Boulogne, Duke Henry I of Brabant, Count William I of Holland, Duke Theobald I of Lorraine, and Duke Henry III of Limburg, and many others. Its objective was to reverse the conquests made by Philip earlier in his reign. John sailed to France and in February 1214 disembarked at La Rochelle. John's plan was to advance from the Loire, while his ally Otto IV made a simultaneous attack from Flanders, together with the Count of Flanders. Planning to execute a pincer movement, the two armies would then converge on Paris. The three armies were not able to coordinate their efforts effectively, however, as Philip was able to successfully divide his forces, sending an army led by his son Louis to intercept and deal with King John's army, while Philip himself led his army east to deal with Otto's army, assembling in the Low Countries. On the 27th of July, 1214, the two armies made contact. After some initial skirmishing, the opposing armies met and deployed, ready for battle near the town of Bouvine. It being a Sunday, Philip did not expect the Allied army to attack, as it was considered unholy to fight on the Sabbath. However, this did not stop the Allied army from advancing. Philip chose a flat field to deploy, well suited for cavalry, and waited for Otto to approach. The French army numbered around six to 7,000 men total, including 1,200 knights and 300 mounted sergeants, as well as 3,000 infantry and 2,000 mercenaries. The royal army was divided into three parts, or battles. The right wing, composed of the knights of Champagne and Burgundy, was commanded by Eude, Duke of Burgundy. In the front of the right wing were men-at-arms and militia from Burgundy, Champagne, and Picardy, led by 150 mounted sergeants from Soissons. The central battle was led by the French king himself, Philip Augustus, and his knights. Among them, William de Bar, Bartholomew of Roy, Gerard Scoff, William of Garland, Angeron of Goussy, and Gaucher of Nemours. In front of the king and his 175 knights were 2,150 infantry from Ile de France and Normandy. The left wing was led by Robert of Drew, supported by Count William of Ponthieu. The main body of the left wing consisted of Bretons and militia from Drew, Perche, Ponthieu, and Vimeu. The Allied army, led by the Holy Roman Emperor Otto IV, numbered around 9,000 men total. Otto's army contained some 1,300 to 1,500 German, Flemish, English, and Brabantian knights, as well as 7,500 infantry. The Imperial Army matched the French and was formed up in three groups. The left wing was under the command of Ferrand of Flanders, 
with his Flemish knights, directed by Arnaud of Udenarde, with infantry from Flanders and Hainaut. The center was under the command of the emperor himself, Otto, and Theobald, Duke of Lorraine, Henry, Duke of Brabant, and Philip Courtenay, Marquis of Namur. It included many Saxons and infantry from Brabant and Germany. In the front stood German pike phalanxes, while Saxon infantry formed the second line. Otto stood between these two lines with 50 German knights. The right flank under the command of Renard de Martin included Brabantian infantry and English knights, the latter under the command of the Earl of Salisbury, William Longespe. On the extreme right, English archers supported the flank of both the Brabant infantry and the nobles of the Duchy of Lorraine and the County of Bar. The battle opened on the French right flank with an attack by 150 light cavalrymen from the Abbey of saint Medard de Soissons against the Flemish knights on the Allied left. The Flemish knights easily drove off these horsemen. Some Flemish knights left their formation and chased the retreating light cavalry. 180 French knights from Champagne in turn attacked and killed or captured the over-aggressive Flemish knights. The Count of Flanders counter-attacked with his entire force of 600 knights and threw the French back. Gachet de Châtillon launched his 30 knights at the Flemish force, followed by a further 250 knights. What followed was intense combat, mounted knights charging against mounted knights with couched lances. The French carried out a continuous series of charges and eventually halted the Allied advance. Many knights on both sides fell from their horses in the first clash. The French were better disciplined than the more loosely formed Flemish knights, and the Allied ranks began to grow thinner as they were assaulted by the compact French formations. Châtillon and Maloon with their knights broke through the ranks of their Flemish counterparts, then wheeled and struck them from the rear constantly switching targets. St. Paul's Knights and the Burgundians engaged in an exhausting struggle against the Flemings, taking no prisoners. The Duke of Burgundy's horse was killed and the Duke thrown to the ground, but he was saved by his Knights who beat off the Flemish and found him a fresh horse. Meanwhile in the center, the French urban militia infantry, 2,000 strong, were gathered under the Oriflamme in front of Philip's knights and the Fleur de Lis. Emperor Otto ordered his knights and infantry to assault the French king's position. This attack had great momentum, and the French were thrown back.
Otto and his knights had nearly reached the French king when they were halted by French knights. The allied infantrymen broke through to Philip and his handful of knightly companions, unhorsing him with their hooked pikes. The French king's armor deflected an enemy lance and saved his life, while Gail de Montigny used the royal standard to signal for help and another knight gave Philip a fresh horse. Meanwhile, men led by William Longespay launched an assault on the French left flank, and Robert de Drew's troops were hard pressed to withstand this attack. During the struggle, William Longespay was unhorsed and taken prisoner by Philip of Drew, and the English soldiers fled. Back in the center, the brutal close combat continued. The Allied infantry used daggers to stab unhorsed French knights through the openings in their helmets and other weak spots in their armor. The Norman knight, Etienne de Longchamp, was killed in this way and the French suffered heavy losses. After repeated French counterattacks and a prolonged melee, the Allies were finally thrown back. The battle in the center was now a melee between the two mounted reserves led by the King and the Emperor. The French knight Pierre de Mavoison nearly captured Otto and his horse, and Gerard Latouille stabbed the emperor with a dagger, which bounced off his coat of mail and struck Otto's horse in the eye, killing it. Otto was saved by four German lords and their followers. As the French sent more knights to attack Otto personally, he fled the field of battle. The German knights fought to the bitter end to save their emperor all being killed or captured. The imperial standard was captured by the French knights, who brought it to their king. By this time, allied resistance in the center had collapsed. On the allied left flank, the Flemish fought on for three hours, driven by knightly honor, despite their increasingly desperate situation. Finally, the wounded and unhorsed Count of Flanders was captured by two French knights, triggering the collapse of his knight's morale. The day was decided in favor of the French, when their wings began to close inwards to cut off the retreat of the imperial center.
The battle ended with the celebrated last stand of Reginald of Boulogne, Renaud de Martin, a former vassal of King Philip, who formed a ring of 400 to 700 Brabantian pikemen. They defied every attack by the French cavalry, while Renaud made repeated sorties with his small force of knights. Eventually, long after the imperial army had retreated, the Brabantian Schildram was overrun by a charge of 50 knights and 1,000 to 2,000 infantry under Thomas de Saint Valery. Renaud was taken prisoner in the melee. The battle was over, and it was a crushing French victory. French knightly casualties were not recorded. The French infantry suffered heavily, however. The Allies had 169 knights killed and heavy losses among the infantry, including between 400 and 700 Brabantian infantry killed. As well as Renaud of Boulogne, two other counts were captured by the French, Hainaut, Ferrand, and William Longespay, as well as 25 barons and over a hundred knights. Philip returned to Paris triumphant, marching his captive prisoners behind him in a long procession as his knights lined the streets to greet the victorious king. In the aftermath of the battle, Otto retreated to his castle of Hartsburg and was soon overthrown by the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II, who had already been recognized as emperor in the south a year and a half earlier. Count Ferdinand remained imprisoned following this defeat, while King John obtained a five-year truce on very lenient terms given the circumstances. Philip's decisive victory was crucial to the political situation in England. The battle ended all hope of a restoration of the Angevin Empire. So weakened was the defeated King John that he soon needed to submit to his barons' demands and agree to the Magna Carta limiting the power of the crown and establishing the basis for common law. Often called the medieval Austerlitz, the battle ended the threat from both England and the Holy Roman Empire and firmly established the Kingdom of France as a major European power. <laughs>